Hi and welcome back! Are you thinking about through hiking a long trail, but you're not sure if you can do it? In this video I will show you the through hikers daily life. I did it. As a 50 plus year old I through hiked the CDT. Today, exactly seven months ago, I started my continental divide trail through hike from Mexico to Canada. 4,600 kilometers in 132 days. I used seven pairs of shoes, I showered 16 times and I washed my clothes about 12 times. While hiking from Mexico to Canada in about four months or a little more, walking indeed becomes a daily life. To switch back to the regular daily life at home is normally not really easy. But this time I really handled it much better than back on the PCT, which was my first through hike. Why? I really don't know. But I think a part of it is definitely while doing something for the first time, it always stays in mind as a really big and different kind of thing. However, let's have a look now how my daily life on trail on the through hike of the CDT looked like. About 5.30 my alarm on my phone went off with the song Wandraren from the Swedish artist Nordman, which means wanderer. As a very first I used to plug in my phone to the power bank, went for a short pee, crawled back to my tent and sleeping bag and put water coming for the breakfast. If I was in beer country I as a very first had to grab my food bag which was hanging in a tree a bit away from the tent for safety reasons. While enjoying my coffee I used to prepare the food for the day. Some snacks like nuts and bars and lunch and as well the dinner I kind of packed up. I did this since I wanted to have the main food lowest down in the backpack which was easier to carry. It's so heavy compared to the other stuff. Then it was time for the breakfast. Depending on temperature and how I felt I ate tortillas with peanut butter or as well like oats with some kind of dried fruits in and nuts and seeds. I really enjoyed my coffee and breakfast in the tent. It was really a beautiful time in the morning. Only very seldom in the morning I felt being in a rush. It depended a little bit on the day's program and miles ahead of me. In desert areas of course I wanted to start as early as possible, so I as well pushed in the morning to get as much as possible miles done before the sun rises and really it gets hot. After changing my sleeping clothes back to the stinky hiking equipment, I started to pack. There was really only the essentials in my backpack, but still it was very important for me that everything has its place and you easily find your stuff whenever you need it. In dry weather it was really easy. I sort of kind of just throw everything out of the tent, built down the tent and then I packed the bag. Was it raining and wet? I tried to pack the whole backpack in the tent which was a little bit more difficult and then kind of crawled out in the last minute and packed down the wet tent. Mm -hmm. 
Somewhere around 6 to 6.30 in the morning I was ready to leave. If it was bad weather it mostly took me a bit longer time to get my things sorted. In dry weather I was quicker. I usually needed my first snack about 5 to 6 miles in from the morning. During this first stop in the morning I mostly had to change my clothes also in a way or other. In particular later in the season towards the end of the trail the mornings were really cold and the days still hot. If possible I choose this first stop also by a water source. I seldom choose the overnight places close to water since there was a lot of condensation coming up during the cold nights. So this first stop by a water source was a perfect possibility to make my morning routines like brushing the teeth and washing my face. And mostly washing one pair of socks. I used to carry two, just that I had to change whenever I needed. And then of course I also had to fill my water flasks. I prepared it, depending on what kind of water it was, I had to filter it and made sure that I had enough water for that stretch coming up. There was a lot of things I did even while walking. Snacking and drinking of course, filming and taking pictures, checking the route which was lying ahead of me on my app, Gantuk app. And often I even planned my next resupply stop. I noted all my tasks to the phone and I checked how I could be most effective then. I really didn't like town stops. It kind of interrupted my daily life out on the trail. Depending on the weather and the day distance which I planned, I made lunch stop earlier or later. Mostly I really cooked like warm food. I got more energy from warm food than from snacks. That's why it was important for me to really eat warm during the day as well. The lunch stop were mostly like a whole hour. I took off my shoes to air my feet out and take care about eventual blisters. And if it was sunny or a little bit windy, I really used the time to dry out my stuff. Sometimes I had as well broken equipment parts which I used to fix in lunch. Like here, I broke my backpack on the side in one of the blowdowns in the trees. As well the lunch spot I possibly chose by a water source. Like this I had to carry less water for cooking and I in the same time could again refill all my containers. If I had time left before my hour was passed, I as well was editing a little bit in my films. During hiking I really had a lot of time for thinking as well. 
But amazingly, a lot of time just when thinking about the actual walking, just putting one foot in front of the other. I think because of that, it's also sort of a meditational action activity, which I loved so much. Getting a little tired during the day, I mostly sat down once more for my last snack. In the same time, I tried to figure out with Gato Cap on my phone where I should make dinner and where I should maybe make camp. There was two reasons why I kept dinner differently from camp spots. In one hand, I really needed again more energy, warm food to make the last miles. But in the other hand, I was so much in bear country, which didn't allow me to cook by the tent or in the tent. Depending on the water sources coming up ahead, it was also the last possibility to get all water flasks full again for dinner and overnight. Sometimes I stopped for dinner already five miles before camp, but other times just like one mile or even less, just to keep the place different. I almost never made long dinner stops since I really wanted to reach my goal of the day. When I was in bear country, I used this last stop as well to prepare my bags again to hang to the tree in the evening and as well brush my teeth since I really didn't want to handle any kind of odors in and close to the tent. It's time to set up camp. As mentioned, as a first thing I do when I'm moving in very country, I search a good spot a little bit farther away from the tent to put up my food back up to the trees. After finishing my setup, I crawl back into my tent and change my clothes, stinky clothes, away to the sleeping clothes, which are sometimes not really better smelling. Then it was time for office work. Mostly around 9 o'clock I was in my sleeping bag with my phone. I figured out how many miles I really hiked today, I note them and I check the coming day. I'm looking in particular how the water sources are coming up and what special things there must be thought about. After I feel that I have control about the coming hiking day, I keep on editing my movies. Like you see, the daily life out on trail becomes really as well routined. However, it is a very satisfying routine. One takes care of only the basic needs of life, a task that fills us humans with satisfaction. Eating, drinking, worms, sleeping and moving. What do we need more to survive?
yeah, I hope you got some kind of impression what it means to be out on a through hike by yourself, what it means to live a daily light out on a long trail. And um, yeah, would be nice if you kind of got a bit inspired and really want to try it yourself. I still will work on a CDT, Continental Divide Trail documentary, which I'm planning to release next spring. I'm working pretty much this winter again as a wilderness guide, so there will not be too much time left for the real film. But uh, I promise to release this in somewhere in May, I guess it will be. So from there you will still get a lot more information about how it is the trail itself, like not only for a hiker, but just the surroundings and what it means to be out there. If you are interested to see this documentary about the CDT, please subscribe if you didn't do it yet and push the bell button that you really don't miss it. Up to then, I'm really looking forward to share all kind of winter adventures with you and I would be really happy if you hang in. For today, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.